Let's take a look at a few of the additional subdivision modes and commands. By default, the transform mode of the subdivision tool allows you to move faces, edges, or vertices, and the face extrude mode allows you to extrude a cage face. To speed up your workflow, you can simply hold down the Alt key while using the transform mode to enable the extrude mode. For example, with the transform mode active, if I select the right top face and then click on the blue arrow, I can move this face up or down. However, if the Alt key is held before clicking on the arrow, it will activate the extrude mode. So instead of simply moving this face, the face is extruded. Using the Alt modifier key with the transform mode also allows for extrusion of multiple adjacent faces at the same time. First, select multiple adjacent faces by holding the Shift key. Now, click and drag on the blue arrow. All of the faces move up together. However, if you first hold the Alt key before clicking on the arrow, these adjacent faces will be extruded together. The Alt modifier also works with adjacent open edges. Use of the Transform mode on this edge simply moves the edge. When using the Alt key, the edge is extruded instead. Similar to faces, you can also use the Shift key to select multiple adjacent edges and then use the Alt key to extrude them together. Now, let's take a look at composing two subdivision objects together. You can create two separate subdivision objects, then use the Compose command to combine them into a single subdivision object. For example, here we have two subdivision objects. First, select both of them and then use the Compose command in the Modify menu to combine these two into a single subdivision object. We now have a single subdivision, but what if we wanted to connect the faces of the combined objects? To do this, we need to use the bridge mode of the Edit Subdivision tool. This mode can be used to connect open edges. It will add a face between open edges. So we first need to delete some faces on these objects. If we double click on the subdivision object, we can then use the first mode of the Edit Subdivision tool to select and then delete these faces. With the bridge mode enabled, Click on one of the open edges to select it. The edge will highlight in red. Next, click on the corresponding open edge you wish to bridge it to. As you can see, a face is added between these two edges. Finally, let's repeat this process for the rest of the edges. This mode will only work with open edges. It will not work on hidden faces created by the face hole mode. If the face is hidden, the face hole mode can be used to redraw the face. For example, if we hide this face using the face hole mode, and then switch to the bridge mode, we cannot bridge these edges. That's because they're not open. We have to either delete the face or use the face hole mode to redraw the face. Moving on, the next mode we're going to look at is the mirror modeling mode. Mirror modeling mode is more of a mode for the subdivision object than a mode for the tool. This mode enables users to easily manipulate forms with bilateral symmetry, isolating manipulations to just one half of the overall form and automatically applying them to the other half. Once enabled, the subdivision object will work in mirror modeling mode until it is disabled. Here we have the start of a bicycle seat. We can use the mirror mode to create both sides of this object at the same time. Double click on the object to activate the edit subdivision tool and then enable the mirror modeling mode button in the toolbar. When the modeling mode is first enabled, you'll need to select the faces or open edges to project the mirror plane. You can simply use the shift key to select multiple faces or edges. For this object, I will first switch to a top view. Next, click once to set the start point of the mirror axis. As the cursor moves to set the mirror axis line, a preview will appear. Now, click a second time to set the mirror axis line. The mirror modeling mode is now active for this object. The cage mesh only appears on one side of the mirror plane. As we manipulate one side of the object, the changes are mirrored to the other side automatically. This mode will remain enabled for this object until the mirror modeling mode is disabled in the toolbar. Once turned off, the cage mesh will appear around the entire object and each side can be edited independently. Next, we will take a look at a few of the subdivision commands. First, let's look at the convert to subdivision command in the modify menu. This command allows for the conversion of other objects into subdivision objects. These objects include meshes, extrudes, tapered extrudes, generic solids, CSG solids, as well as 2D and 3D polygons. Specifically, objects with planar, non-curved surfaces. For instance, here we have several meshes that represent a light fixture. 
To convert these mesh objects into a subdivision object, simply select them all, then go to Modify, Convert, Convert to Subdivision. You can now edit each of the subdivision objects using the Edit Subdivision tool. So if we wanted to adjust the arm height for these objects, you could just double click on the object to activate the Edit Subdivision tool and then edit it. Finally, you may have noticed that the backplate of this object looks a little different from the original mesh. All of the edges on the backplate were smoothed during the conversion. When objects are converted, all edges are uncreased. To quickly crease all of these edges within the objects, you can use the Crease All Edges Context Menu command. First, you'll need to double click on the object to activate the Edit Subdivision tool. Then, right click on the object. Now, you'll see the Crease and Smooth commands. In this case, we need to use the Crease All Edges command. As you can see, this part of the backplate is now square again. Now, we just need to repeat this process for the other parts. In addition to the Crease All Edges command, there are also commands to smooth all edges as well as Crease and Smooth All Vertices commands in the right-click contextual menu. These commands will quickly adjust creases for the entire object. In the next sections, we'll take a more practical look at creating geometry with this tool.